guys, it's Ken. How you doing? Happy Sunday. Heading in for a haircut. First thing in the morning. And it appears my favorite parking spot is waiting for me. It's been a little while since I've been to an actual stylist. I normally go to hair cuttery and the girl I normally go to, every time I've gone, has not been there. So I've just gone home and buzzed up the sides on my own. I don't feel comfortable doing the top on my own though, so that's been kind of uh, running a little wild. So it's time to get all of this chopped off. See you guys in a bit. Just like that, we're done. Next stop, Target. All right, we got what we came for. Some white pillowcases and some bed sheets. But more on those later. Remember to grab your receipt. That self checkout is a breeze. Now I'm not quite sure what time Michael's opens on a Sunday. But let's uh take a run by because I'm very curious about something. And that something I was talking about should be right in here. Look, it's all so glorious. The pumpkins. You know what that means. Fall is on its way. Lots of Thanksgiving decor as well. Look at all the fall colors. Makes my heart very happy. And while I'm here, I'll pick up some paint for a project for summer camp. Look, there's more. You know what? While I'm here, let's get one more thing. Some clay. White clay. Now we can go. Back here in my garage, back there at Target, I showed you guys that uh, set of bed sheets and pillowcases. And then at Michael's, we bought some paint and also picked up some clear glue. Well, here's what I'm working on. I'm playing with some materials this weekend to experiment and see what works and what doesn't work. I've tried this a few times and with no success. So I'm trying again with some different materials, hoping for a better result. I'm making what's called a batik. Well, at least my students at Art Camp will. And I'm gonna begin with some clear glue and make a design on my fabric. This is the pillowcase I purchased. So let's begin with that. All right, it might be kind of hard to see, but I made a sun. Now there's the center of the sun. And I made some solar flares coming out from it. Now let it dry and then paint with acrylic paint. Okay, for those who don't know what a batik is, a batik is an ancient style of putting brightly colored design onto fabric. Usually it's done with wax and dyes, but to simplify things for us, we're using school glue and acrylic paint because the glue will mask off any areas and the paint, being acrylic, will stick to the fabric without washing away. Because later when it dries, all this will go into the washing machine with a very hot wash and all that glue will wash away and possibly leave behind some nice white lines that were this glue. I've done batiks in the past and been very successful but um, recently using some new materials not so successful so this is an um, experiment so let's paint. I did water the acrylic down just a little bit so it'll be easier to saturate into the fabric. I'm going for sunset colors. I'm going to start with a layer of yellow, introduce some red, make the outside red and orange. And it should look like this. And now let's move it outside. We'll put the sun in the sun. All right, we'll let it dry right here and come back when it's all done. 
In the meantime, somebody's taking a trip to PetSmart. Where are you going, Luna? Where are you going? Luna's going to PetSmart to get this bandage off her ear. Awesome. And she promised Ruby Sue to pick up a toy. Can I find a toy for Rubes? And some food. You make a choice? <laughs> Toys R Us stores might be closed, but their toys are still here at PetSmart. I think we're next. I like how low to the ground the doctor's chair is. <laughs> well, the doctor says no surgery. That's good news. Now, small load. Hot water, here we go. All right, so fast forward a couple hours. We had some errands to run, took care of those. Got a bite to eat, some lunch, now we're back. Check on those batiks, see how they came out. Haven't seen these yet, so we're viewing it for the first time together. All right, let's spread them out. All right, so this came out really nice. Ooh, did you hear that? All right, it is summertime in Florida daily occurrence. I have to keep an eye on that. But these came out awesome. I made a second one. So, yep, back in business. Okay, so sadly, one of our neighbors, Mrs. Bailey, passed away about a month ago. Her home is across the street, right there, and her family had an estate sale this this past weekend. And Miss Bailey collected a lot of very interesting things, including some pretty cool stuff from Oviedo. I'm guessing she was a long time Oviedo resident. And I bought some very personal things, some very cool things that I'm sure she'd be happy that I have. If you guys know me, you know that I love collecting local historical stuff. Not so much the high ticket items, but the small things. Like if you know anything about Oviedo, you know that it used to be a citrus and celery producing area. I found these wonderful produce labels. This one's Moonbeam. I'm not sure what they sold, but from Oviedo, Florida. There's also White Rose Celery. The Nelson and Company Water Tower still stands in downtown Oviedo. Ben Franklin, again from Oviedo. And Maple Leaf, Seminole County Citrus Fruits. There was this book, a biography, that came with a coffee mug. Check that out to commemorate the centennial of Oviedo. Then there were several cookbooks. This one's going back to 1975, the Oviedo Women's Club. What I like about these books is that not only are there cool recipes, but these are local residents. Maybe some are still alive, perhaps. But this one was from 1975, 1981, and 1984 and Oviedo's Kitchen Secrets from 1951. What I really love about this book is that you scroll down the names I mentioned earlier. Lawton, Klontz, another Lawton, Slavic. I mean, these are names of the founding families of Oviedo. And each recipe as the owner's name, right near it. Also, some really cool advertisements. The Citizens Bank of Oviedo is still standing. I'm not sure about Doris's Beauty Salon or Taylor's Pharmacy. Actually, I think Taylor's is still in operation in Winter Park. I love this here. Kitchen Proverbs. A pot can call the kettle black. Now he's in a pickle. She's cooked her goose with him. That's when she dropped her candy. Some of these, I don't know what they mean. 
he has salt and pepper hair. Okay, that one I got. That's more like what I have right now. And if by chance you're looking for a pickled pig's feet recipe, let me know. I'll forward you Miss James Wilson's recipe. It's right there. If you're into that. Personally, me, not so much. And of course, one of these iconic Hyperic for Oviedo chickens, bumper stickers. I don't think they sell these anymore. I could be wrong, but certainly a must have. There were also some other trinkets and little knickknacks, some record albums. But here's something I did not know about Mrs. Bailey. She collected clowns. First one is this guy, made out of ceramic, and it's a candle holder. Pretty cool looking clown. But then, there's this guy. Friendly, perhaps, or perhaps not. Of course, if you guys know me, it all depends upon the proper lighting. And this guy is no exception. I mean, this guy already has a nice creepy paint job, so just a little bit of light is all he needs. One more look at this guy. It's fun to sit and play with the light effects. All I'm doing is tilting this light and reflecting it off of uh, certain places. 